Thank you all for showing up for our press event. Um, we are here at a very historic moment. My name is Holly Chang. I'm the founder and executive director of Golden Bridges. We are the co-organizer of the China Youth Delegation to Copenhagen. And last week, last Thursday, we worked in partnership with uh, youth from the United States, um, from different organizations like Sustain Us, Focus the Nation, um, many Chinese organizations like China Youth Climate Action Network, CDM Club, Student Green Association. And uh, we had a workshop between 50 youth from China and 50 youth from the United States. We came together in a highly engaging um, workshop where we had dialogue about our own personal journeys to Copenhagen and also about the issues at hand between our two great nations in the climate negotiations. Um, the purpose of the workshop was to pioneer youth diplomacy and partnership between our two countries. We are here today to discuss some of the reflections and results from our workshop. And I'm here with four very distinguished young leaders. Um, to my right, this is Zhang Yu from China. She is a junior in Beijing High School number four. She's the youngest youth of the China Youth Delegation. Um, to my left, this is Ben Wessel. He's a 20-year-old from uh, Washington, D.C. He's a delegate of the Sustain Us delegation, and he's a, a junior at Middlebury, Middlebury College and has been working on environmental issues for the past three years. Um, and on my other right is Holly Jones. She's a senior at the University of Iowa, majoring in history and environmental studies. She's a delegate of the Will Steger Foundation, and she's a chair of the executive committee of the Sierra Student Coalition. And last but not least, we have Lena Lee on my left. She is a graduate of Peking University. She uh, majored in international politics with an emphasis on environmental policy. She has a master's degree. So what we're going to do is go ahead and get started. We have um, a couple statements from a couple of the delegates, and then we will go ahead and take questions. So I'm going to start with a statement from Zhang Yu. <coughs> Um, personally, I really want to know whether the process of the last year COP15 meeting is too slow. I know um, the people who are sitting here who has always go, gone to the meeting last week. I don't know whether you all have this feeling. It is a thing which is closely about my life and also the life of your children. We need to survive. The result of your negotiation is not only related to single country's interest but it can decide our life. From when we were little baby in cradle until I'm already 17 now, the negotiators, I mean the adults, the educators as well, are always teaching us about thinking more for others, having a whole set of matters, then make a choice for long-term succeed. Not to be a selfish person, but why? Why they're always only taking care about their life now, they're enjoying their life, and of course, the majority I'm sorry. <laughs> the majority of them wanting to stand the bad weather in 2050 or even later. But which will our life be like? Which will their children's life be like? We hope that we can also enjoy our life at that time in a world with birds singing, flowers blooming, with fresh air, clean water, and enough food as well. I really began to wondering whether the negotiation here can gather tomorrow of our homeland and our future life as well. We want some more changes. That's why we're here. Thank you. And next we're going to have a statement from Ben Wessel. Thanks for coming. So, when we started conceiving the idea of bringing together Chinese and American youth to talk about uh, where we are at COP15, where we've been, and where we're going in our shared future, I was a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. I was afraid that we wouldn't find any common ground between the Chinese youth delegation and the various um, American youth that are here in Copenhagen. And it's been so rewarding for me to be able to work so, uh, with these like incredible individuals and just like really awesome kids, first of all, or uh, young adults, because um, that's what we are. It's been so amazing to see 
how much we have in common and how much we are building a relationship based on trust, based on ambition, and based on the need for competition between our two countries to build a clean energy future and a sustainable planet for us to live on. So I was nervous, like I said before, I thought we were gonna come from these two totally alien places and not see eye to eye on anything. And now I know that I can rely on my friends um, from China to speak up for the youth voice, to speak up about our generation and what we need here. What we need here is a real deal that will create that clean energy economy, that will spur development, that will lead to a safe climate future. And now I know that we, as young people, can have a trustful relationship and we're calling on our leaders and our politicians to build a similar relationship that will enable a deal that will have exactly what I've been asking for, a clean energy economy and a safe climate future. So I really hope we could have a conversation today about how we plan to work together uh, and what this amazing relationship is gonna lead to in the 21st century. Thanks. Hi everyone, it's uh, really great to see you all here. I just wanted to quickly share um, how, what an amazing experience our uh, meeting that we had between Chinese and US youth last Thursday was. Uh, to be quite frank with you, uh, the negotiations have been a little disappointing knowing that um, we don't really know what the end result will be and what's at stake is our future. But I can honestly tell you that after meeting with the Chinese youth and getting, town, uh, getting time to just sit to talk and get to know one another, I have tremendous hope for our future. I know that sitting in this room right now, sitting next to me, are our future leaders and that we are going to continue to push until, uh, until our future is ensured, until we have a sustainable and prosperous world around us. And so, uh, I just had an incredible uh, moment of hope and joy, and I've really been carrying that with me ever since last Thursday, and just wanted to let you know how exciting it is to see you all here today. What I want to say here is also what I felt on the event and up to now with this dialogue keep on going, is that the more we see the differences and we openly share them, we started to get, get to know each other. There's no need to say, one way right, the other way wrong, or choose between A and B. It's about first to open our heart and to listen, and second to appreciate the difference. That's how, how the world is and how amazing it is. And also build on these differences, as well as a lot more similarities we have. For example, our shared future, our desire to learn from each other, our appreciation of what each other has done for them, their people and for the world, and to build on this, to work together. I think that's more important. And this amazing journey has just started. That's why we sit here and we look forward to continue this journey all together with the people here in this room and with the children and young people back at home in both China, US, and of course, uh, all over the world. That's my I just want to add one point to that. It's amazing that there are so many policy differences, at least even within our own country delegations. You know, there's a variety of opinions about policy amongst the Americans as well as amongst the Chinese. And I thought that would be a very big stepping or a, a block in order for us to have a conversation that we wouldn't be able to talk because of these policy differences. But rather, I found that once we started sort of joking and, and having fun and, and eating dinner together, and once we started building a friendship, we found that it was easier to discuss those policy differences and determine why we felt differently and how we might be able to come to a shared future. And so when we see our negotiators uh, having these very similar policy differences sometimes, I wonder if it would be easier if they did trust each other and they were willing to be ambitious together, if they could come to a similar relationship that we've come to you know, over the past week, but really over the past couple of years. Um, if they could build a similar relationship, would they be able to find more policy common ground? It's, it's a challenge to our leaders. Out of time, we'll be in the hallway. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you.